You've been studying the stone for 150 years. We've been doing so for nearly a thousand. And still, its true power remains locked away. I would like you to help us unlock it. So welcome to episode 707. This one's called The Queen's Gambit. It's written by Miranda Kwok, who uh, has been with us forever. Hi. I know. I already miss this show so much. And this episode was directed by, in an amazing first-time uh, performance behind the camera, Lindsay Morgan. You know her, you love her. <laughs> Hi, Lindsay. Hi, guys. Hi, Jason. It's not your job to rescue me. I was coming for you. And now you're going to rot in here with me until they execute us. But hey, at least we get to die together. You're just mad because I turned out to be a killer like you. Lindsay really found a way to really mine the emotion from each actor. And as you know, the process is so different for each actor. And you basically were able to navigate that and, and figure out how to speak the language for each actor. So that was really great to see. Thank you, Miranda. I, I feel like as a director, um, every actor is a puzzle. And once you figure out how you can help them be their best, they're going to want to rise to their best and give their best performance. And so that was one of my biggest goals on set every day was how can I inspire them or reach them or collaborate with them so they feel safe and available to do that. So that was really interesting getting to study everyone and the way everyone works. Rise and shine, errand boy. I love this episode for Amori. As much as we've seen Amori play these different roles throughout the season, you know, as the thief, as, you know, always Murphy's partner, we never really got to see her have her own purpose and drive or where she felt she fit in to the hundred. She always felt like an outsider. And I think we saw in past seasons how, you know, she thought we were offering her up to die and she wasn't part of the team. You like this, being the queen of the castle, being worshiped. Don't be ridiculous. Besides, You've worshipped me for years. I feel like Amori really has found her calling right now in Sanctum, and that's to unite the Cogs with the Sanctumites' parents. When I was a child on Earth, people like me were seen as a stain on the bloodline. They called us Frick Drena, not Nulls. But it's the same thing. I know what it's like to be thrown out like garbage. And normally Amori has to spend so much time covering up her pain, and this is a real episode where we get to see her um, explore, you know, explore the, you know, her her pain and what she's been through, and the craving of family that she's always had, but has never been able to, you know, to actually have that family until Murphy and Space Crew. And I must trust you to send you in here with me. Trust me. No one trusts me. She does, or she wouldn't have told you who I was. There's also this amazing tandem of Murphy and Shay Hayda. You know, they, they have an epic chess match, chess match for the ages. If you win, I'll give you what you want most of all. And what is that exactly? Enlighten me, please. A chance to be a hero. <laughs> yeah, you don't know me very well. This was my favorite scenes to shoot. Richard and JR, I mean, they're just such amazing performers and to have them go toe to toe, all day long in a cell <laughs> playing chess, it was electric. So that is what you want, to be back in power, big man? Well done, John. You just figured out what Indra knew the moment she realized that I was alive. I really liked playing with that idea of this chess game, Murphy desperately trying to be on the level of Shaheda and trying to play his game better than him and get into his head. But you'll come to see what happens. Let's just play the game. 